This is the four-hole challenge. We are down here at Packersham Golf Centre and I've been joined by the top, top man, Jamie Redknapp. How you doing, mate? I'm great, man. I'm looking forward to this. Yeah, really Weather's good, golf course is great. Looking forward to it. I really appreciate you doing it, mate. You don't realise the amount of people on the comment section going, get Redknapp on, get Redknapp on, get Redknapp on. So you're here, it's going to be good. Um, I brought you down here, mate, because obviously it's a lovely little golf course. Yeah. But on the green, there's two flags. Right. There's one for all proper golfers, like our elder gentlemen and ladies, and there's one for kids with a bigger hole. Okay. I know you're mustard at golf. I don't know about that. <laughs> I know you're That's mustard. why they want to see it. They've seen me play the Dunhill, thinning them, fatting them, hitting them in the bunk. Oh, don't. Right, so I'm going for the kids, and okay. you're going for the proper ones, yeah? Deal, let's right. do it. You ready? Four! Yes, let's play. Right, this first shot, Jay, is, uh, is, is big for me. It's big for me. Tubes. Absolute oh, crap. It. It's gone over the bunk. What a shot. <laughs> I want to give you I'll Absolute give you a little one of those. The creme. Oh no, Jamie! Do I get a breakfast ball? <laughs> yeah, first no, one. No, 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 I'll play it. Is that free. dead? That, that's gone. Is it? That's gone. First one's free. We go again. No, no, no. Three off the tee. I've got to go three off the tee. Yeah. You know, you won the, you won the uh, Paddy Power thing the other week. Yeah. And is, is it fair to say the four old challenges got to you? Got to me. <laughs> got to me very, very early, Tubes. Oh, that's not great either, Tubes. That's the problem with this game. Once you hit one left, the next one always goes right, doesn't it? <laughs> it's got, oh, okay, it's go got in my head already. Go on. So Jay, honestly, really, really appreciate you coming on the old four-hole challenge. Um, how long have you been playing golf for? And um, what's your handicap? Well, I'm officially a four, and I've been playing, I have to be honest, Tube, since when I retired, at, I retired at 31, I needed someone in my life because you get so much free time when you retire. And to, so that is great in a way, it's amazing, but there's also, you've got to keep yourself busy. You need something, and I think especially with golf, because you never master it, as you can see from my first drive there. <laughs> but the more you play, the more you love it. And I've met some great people, great friends. With my knee, is what I can't really do a lot of running or too much exercising, so golf just keeps me fit. And it's good for my mind as well. Yeah, yeah. I find when I get out, it just, no matter what's going on in your life, good and bad, just forget about it for those few hours and the fresh air. I don't, know, I don't, I don't mind, I'll play in the wind, the rain, the cold. And obviously days like today, we're blessed, aren't we? Yeah, so, oh, I love it, mate. And you got down to four, that is, that's, Sensation, really. yeah, I got down to two for a while and then I was just I was struggling a bit off two. I couldn't really I couldn't compete and I felt I found like that I was under so much pressure I almost didn't enjoy it because you know you want to try and then get down to scratch but every time you have a double bogey you're saying oh that's those shots gone if you start off. So it really get into your head then? Yeah I'm a bit erratic as well I have really good games like when I can shoot like three or four under and other days when I'm sort of so my golf can really sort of be up and down. Yeah. But I'm like you, mate. I just love it. I mean, when we're, you know, we, had a, we play a lot, you know, with the, with the boys and stuff like that, and it's just so much fun, isn't it? But it's, it's like you said when you retired, you needed something. Yeah. It was exactly the same for me when I gave up the boost. Yeah. I was like, this is a perfect escape. Yeah. Like to get out, see your mates, have a laugh. Of course. It's like, and, and it's good, you know, it's a lot because obviously you work at Sky, we, we work together, so yeah. You need that. It's so much time off, so much thinking time. And you can do it like I played with my son this morning and it's something that you know I, I enjoyed. I played a bit with my dad when I was younger. So they're father-son moments that are just so important to me. And I just find it like so therapeutic. I just, I just love it. I just love the fact that you're out playing golf. Golf life. Yeah, it's the exactly. only life we know. Yeah. Uh, when we do these before whole challenge, I'll say to the, the, the uh, guests on it, who's the best footballer uh, golfer? They either say yourself or Jimmy Bullard. Oh no, Jimmy's better than me. Yeah? Yeah. I played with Jimmy. Mind you, I did play Jimmy once, and I think he was something like four. He was four up with five to play, and I beat him once. Oh, oh his yeah, ass he went. was fuming. <laughs> now nah, Jim's a proper ball striker. Only he? he can really play. Oh, can't he? Has he done this with you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unbelievable. Jimmy's really good. Do you know the best I played? Well, Jimmy, but there's a Simon Davis. You know me. Simon Davis is unbelievable. 
Paul McGinley said to me once, so we, went, we go on a trip to America, we're really lucky, so there's 12 of us, went to Pebble Beach, you play Pebble Beach, Cypress Point and Spyglass, it's just the best trip ever. And Simon Davis come and, and Paul McGinley said he's in the top 10 ball strikers he's ever played with. Serious? And that's pros everything, he's played with Tiger, he's played with them all. He hits the ball, he hits it so pure, he takes divots like that, you know, one of them just yeah. presses the ball, yeah. yeah. So talented. But Simon's much better than I am, much better. Do you yeah, he, he was a member of Queenwood, and we pl I played him in the club champs once, and he oh, he destroyed me. It was embarrassing. I'm not going to tell you the score. It was embarrassing. Did you chuck him up for this, though? Yeah, I'll get him up, yeah. mate. I'm yeah. telling you. Yeah. Simon. It, yeah. I oh, need we, lessons. I need help. Oh. Get on it. If he could chip and putt, my God, he'd be, you know, he's a scratch golfer, but he'd be plus three, plus four. He's, wow. he's that good, Tubes, honestly. Big shout. Right, we're both over here, mate. Yep. Got a little bit right. Is he dancing? Is he? Oh, yeah, it was all right. He's dancing. Yeah, it was all right, Tube. Not He's bad, dancing. but you're the. I'm through up at sea, so I'm there for four. <laughs> Jamie Redknapp is dancing. Right, Jay, I'm going to go same as you, mate. I'm going pitching wedge. Or wedge. Perfect for you. Wedge your roof. This is where it goes tits up for me. No, mate, so. stay. You've got this. You've got a great drive. Approach play. Oh, it's beautiful. Just nipped it oh. in there. Oh, no, he's up. Stay there. The Billy Bunks? <coughs> it might be all right. Just oh. sort of, lit. yeah, do you know what the strike was going for? Oh. Jay, everyone knows you now for being a fantastic pundit and a TV presenter. But I think people forget just how good of a footballer you were. Do you miss it? Oh, uh, yeah. Because it, it was my life tubes, you know, as a, as a kid. Like, I, I, it's hard to say that ever since I was two, three years of age, I just followed my dad. Every, I had such a great relationship with my dad growing up. So I'd go school holidays. I just wanted to be around him. I wanted to be around football. I always wanted to be around footballers. I wanted to learn. I wanted to, to practice. So I know what you, because sometimes it's people go, oh, you know, you think you like golf, you're, you know, you do league on your own. Is football, football secondary to you? or? It's only, there's only, that's football's my life. Number one, you know, I'm lucky to have the golf to keep me, you know, just so I can keep busy, all the other bits and pieces, but football has been so good to me. And, you know, there's not, a, I, I, I can honestly, this is a God's truth. I go, there's not a night that goes by without me dreaming about football. Really? Every single night I have a dream that involves football. I know that sounds crazy. No, that's brilliant. But it's so true. Well, that, it's proves, just... that proves that you've still proper absolutely love the game. Oh, absolutely. I, and, I, and I can't, you know, I, I love my job. I'm so fortunate to work on Sky. But, uh, you know, it's cruel. It, it was cruel to me in a way because of the injuries I had. But, you know, that was, that's the thing sometimes. It's, it's like, it's not a frustration, but, you know, when you people, you know, like you, it was, and I never want, I don't want people to think otherwise, you know, when people say, yeah. you know, you know, you're more interested in other things. No, no, football's, football's my number one. I'm just lucky that a couple of other things have come my way. And, yeah. you know, I do, I miss it every day. Yeah. But you can't play forever. And at 31, I had to retire. I had so many operations, so many injuries, and people were like, oh, you know, does he care? Is he? I couldn't do that. I broke my ankle twice. Countless I mean, you were knee so operations. Weren't you? Like, yeah, I was, but then again, I was so lucky as well, Tubes, you know, because. Yeah, I mean, I, as for yeah, the injury, injury like... wise, yeah, I suppose so. Injury wise, you know, and there were always injuries like twice broke my ankle playing for England, tore my hamstring playing for England. I think it was because I used to get really nervous playing, playing sometimes because I wanted to do so yes, well. Yeah. I genuinely, because th the three, to, that, that, that can't be a coincidence that I got injured all the time playing for England. Yeah. It has to have been, and I, I remember never been out in the hotel, couldn't sleep the night before a game when I was at Liverpool games, I was fine. Yeah. But England just meant so much to me and I wanted to play so well and I felt the added pressure. So I think that was made one of the reasons why I used to pick up those injuries, if I'm honest. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, who knows? And talking about injuries and rehabbing, didn't you once rehab with Ronaldo yeah. on R9? I know, yeah. unbelievable. <laughs> we was in, was in America, Tubes. So I'm, I'd, I'd had my surgery, I was six months-ish into, the, into the, uh, the rehab, and Ronaldo turns up at Dr. Stedman's. And I'm buzzing because I'm a football nut. I wouldn't yeah, yeah. Ronaldo's coming in. Must be like, I was like so excited. Yeah. No? And so we're doing our exercises together. We get paired because he was, he was just, it was after he'd, remember that, that injury when he tore his patella, you know, his patella off yeah, the yeah. bone or, or whatever it was. So Ronaldo comes, I've got my physio with me. 
you know, the Liverpool physio, and, he, and he's got about an entourage of five. He's got two beautiful women with him. <laughs> I'm like with my physio, who's like, I'm looking at him thinking, at least dressed up or something, you know? <laughs> and not for that, no, he's got. So we, we start getting exercise. So the the, uh, the rehab guy's saying that you've got to do like two minutes of squat. It was quite hard, don't yeah. get me wrong, but not impossible. You know, you've got. Anyway, I'll be doing it. If you tell me to do 100, I'll do 100. So we got to about 30. Ronaldo just looks at me and he goes, just get sits down, stops, right? And then two, two like really good looking girls start dabbing his head down, he's drinking, and I'm like, I'm doing, and I'm thinking, well, I'm gonna come back. And in my mind, I'm thinking, I'm gonna come back and you know, he, he might not now because he's, he's he looks like, it, he's, not doing it properly. Yeah, he's not doing it properly. The following year, he, got the, he won the, gold, the golden boot of the World Cup. <laughs> I got sold to Southampton. <laughs> Yeah, no, just really. two, just yeah. two beautiful ladies. Yeah. Oh, honestly, every time that. tubes he stopped and someone and, like, and it was it was hardish. Yeah, and he just looked at me and he gave it no like that look. <laughs> anyway, yeah. off of me, um, unbelievable. And he left. He ended up going to to France. And I, and I was actually I was a little bit upset because I thought I just hope because he was I was a, such a fan of his. I thought yeah. I hope he doesn't sort of almost lose the will to be a footballer again. Yeah. Anyway, he made he went to Paris. I think he had a surgery there, and then the following year or whenever it was. He obviously made the great comeback and scored the golden boot in the World Cup. But what a player! What it's a funny legend. though. It was so the way he just used to look at me and go, <laughs> and just used to used to get up like, not is it, I'm not having this. <laughs> not for me, yeah, mates. I know. Ronaldo, what a legend! Yeah, he was. He was a proper legend. <laughs> Come on! Oh, take that! Take that. Sure. He's down for six. Good putt. Well, that's all we needed to do. That's all we needed to do. It's gone one up. One up. Well done, Chips. One up. On to the second. What do you think about wonky T blocks? Yeah, that's yeah. It's a hard enough game as it is. <laughs> Let alone you don't need a bit of a, won a wonky T box. I'm so glad. I know. Because me and Ange do vlogs, and Ange is like, mate, they're not wonky. They're very. Uh, yeah. Oh, where'd you stand? Look. That's. No. So you walk across, it should be there. Then I'll make it easier, but it's there, so. But, but this game is just made to just mess with your head. Everything about it, because it's probably not even wonky, but we. Because our, our eye line is looking at it there, you've got a tree there. It's just all, it's just so hard, isn't it, Tubes? Come on, let's hit a good one. Bad wonky tea blocks. I'm going to get t-shirts, mate, definitely. Right. This is not, this is not easy, is it? Tim Billy Bunk Bunk. Yeah. Here he is. Oh, it's a bit thin though, Tubes. Here it he is. It's thin to win. Yes, who's back? It's done all right. It's done all right. Do you know what, Tubes? Are you, like, are you one of those? You know when you see the pros though? Yeah. And they just, they, the tea gets like, they destroy it, don't they? I don't get it. Well, do you know what I think you've got? To, you've, that's because they lean on it. Because well, okay. you've, got, you've got to have some of that. But we, what we do is pick it. We yeah. sort of like, pick it up, but you've got to hit down on it, you know? That's the key. Because I, I honestly always wondered when I watch golf and I see them take massive figures, so I'm like, surely that's not... No, that's, that's not what they want. want. But they're compressing the ball into the ground because that's what the problem we... With golf, it's opposite because yeah. like in football, you clip a ball, you're sort of leaning back and you want to just hit it up in the air, you see it go up. Yeah. But with golf, you've got to hit down to make it go up, which is so it's a bit of a... Makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah. You know, that, that, and that comes with just turning the club into the ground. When you see a good player, like see Rory play, yeah. I played with Rory a couple of times. I love this. And he just hit, the way that he hits the ball, is just like, I, mean, I played in the Dunhill a few years ago, the Tubes, with, um, we made the cut. So I didn't play that well. I was, I was paired with Luke Donald. So we played, at, uh, we played uh, Kings Barnes. He's near the top of the leaderboard and we're sort of doing all right as a team. So I'm, I remember we came off the last and Luke went, he went in a birdie blitz. So we make the cut. Yeah. So I looked up at the leaderboard at, at uh, Kings Barnes and leading, 
is Luke Donald, my partner. Right. And we've made the cut as a team. And second is Rory McIlroy. So my little mind, my brain is going, does that mean tomorrow that I'm going to be playing with Rory McIlroy in the last day at the Dunhill? Yeah. With, and Rory paired with his dad, who's a great guy, Jerry. So we had a, that was our four ball. Rory, myself, Jerry and Luke Donald. Mm -hmm. I was so nervous. I can remember on the first tea tubes, yeah. putting the, and I'd had a few drinks the night before, thought I'd just calm myself <laughs> down. I was like that. I couldn't get the ball on the tee, but I actually played all right, funny enough. Yeah. yeah. But the nerves were so. so Could you imagine that teeing up? You just knowing know. Rory McIlroy is behind you. Like that. I don't know. But they're all great, the pros. No, they don't look down on you. No, 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 look down. Yeah. But I'm just saying because yeah. he's the. Yeah, it's so me. Yeah. But they're so. They are. I, I genuinely because I think they know how hard the game is. So nobody, they wouldn't laugh you at a bad shot. They don't laugh unless yeah. you laugh. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, yeah. But I was laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Jay, obviously you come from a very successful footballing family and uh, your cousin's your super friend. Yeah. I love the guy. Yeah. I just think he's a brilliant person. Obviously I'm a massive Chelsea fan. But who was a better player as a youngster? You know like family barbecues out in the garden? Yeah. Who was better, you or him? Well there's five years difference between us. Yeah. So, do you know what? It's funny, I've just... I've just um, wrote a book actually about my childhood growing up and it, ain't, it actually ends on my Liverpool, uh, scoring on my Liverpool debut at Southampton. And it's been so nice to talk to sort of people that were in, involved in, you know, in my life, in my career. And, but what I've done, sections with each person and Frank, when I, Frank and I were talking and there's so many nice memories about us as kids. Because obviously Frank's dad was a really good player. Yeah. My dad was a really talented player, really good player as well. People forget that. Yeah. He could really play dad. Yeah. Uh, he was just a bit mad. I think that was his problem. <laughs> he used to fall out of all the managers. Um, but he, so Frank and I would spend hours. Like the five years was a bit of a difference. Yeah. But I played English schoolboys and, and Frank didn't. Yeah. So I suppose there'd be, but Frank had this amazing attitude and ability and we were very different. If we would have complimented each other really well if we'd have played together more because he was brilliant at getting to the box. The best goal scoring midfielder I've ever seen. Yeah. I can't think of a better one. His numbers are a joke. And I like to sort of play, you know, deeper and, you know, find, I wanted the ball in deeper areas where Frank was right. like, Forget that bit. Yeah, so that's, the, that's the money, you yeah, know, yeah, and, yeah. and it, look, look how well he's done. So, but we're different. We're different sort of players. And we were different players, but he was just, you know, incredible. And like you say, he's, you can see why he's making, making such a name as a manager because he's just a good guy. Brilliant. Players respect him. It, it, I think that when managers become, when their ego gets too big and it gets in the way of being successful, you've got a problem. But Frank Tech puts that aside. You never once, you wouldn't know if Frank played a thousand games or he didn't play football at all there's yeah. no ego there he's just genuine he comes across well he tells it as it is and i think he's taken a little bit of that from my dad because when dad did interviews after games the yeah. thing people liked about him was if his team was rubbish he didn't try to insult the fans intelligence he just said it yeah no good today yeah he right. was rubbish no yeah. i'm fed up with him or whatever and that's the best way and frank's a bit like that yeah exactly. you know he doesn't you know doesn't mince his words and i think players respect that as well talking about post-match interviews and your dad and super frank that clip when Frank was a youngster, yeah, and the geezer went, he ain't good enough. He ain't good enough. Your dad, your dad, it's the, one of the best clips yeah. ever. It is. It's like to, when, because it was an when to think. Imagine that happening now in the modern game, where you had a, a fans forum, yeah. and you've got a young player there, and it's already hard enough as it is. Like we were talking about this clip the other day with Frank, and Frank's sitting there. He's got his curtains. He's got the long hair, <laughs> and he just and he actually said, "I wanted the I wanted to be swallowed up by the by the world. I just didn't want to be there." It's so and cringe, it's got, isn't it? It's cringe. And Dad's like, "I'll tell you now, <laughs> he will go right to the top." And the way he said it, it was so convincing, and he was so right, you yeah. know, because Frank just absolutely blitzed it, you know. From I think Ch going to Chelsea changed everything for him because his work ethic. You know, working with better players every day. Because I think that West Ham group was a bit wild, wasn't yeah. it? Like Razor, Wright, and all those boys. And Rio, I think it did them all good, probably, to sort of get away. Yeah. You know, and, and uh, you know, and but Frank just, he deserves everything because there are, and I think it's the same as with golf, football. There, no, there are no shortcuts, Tubes. So if no. you want to be successful in life, if you want to become a professional at anything, and you know, I think now young players, there's so much temptation. You've got your PlayStations, you've got all the bits and pieces that go with it. But if you want to be a player, you've got to work harder than everybody else. Absolutely. And it's the same with the game we're playing now. You've yeah. got to spend more hours on the... It's no coincidence all the great players that worked hard. Like Frank had that attitude. I like to think I did. Steven Gerrard, when I was at Liverpool, he had that attitude. Robbie Fowler, they'd spent... You know, Robbie had a diff different <laughs> way of thinking in a lot of ways, but he still used to... Although he was a bit of a rascal off the field, yeah. he'd still spend his time finishing. You know, he'd get a bag of balls off. 
heart and training and just do what made him a genius that he was. So, you know, the, all the play, all the greats that we see, they've all worked harder than anyone else. I'd love to get those three together now. Frank, your dad, and the geezer. Oh, I know, yeah. 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 He, he must hate that clip, must <laughs> not he? Oh. But Daddy said, oh, Daddy, what's his Daddy doing? Uh, <laughs> daddy in my life. But my dad said that the, at the time, Scott Cannon, I think he was the, the other lad. Yeah. But yeah. he said he was a really good lad. Yeah. And he felt quite, he felt uncomfortable about, you know, mentioning him. And I think when he, his dad's a good guy, he doesn't like to make yeah. anyone feel bad. And obviously, um, Matty Holland had a great career. Yeah. You know, paid for Ireland, you know, Ipswich, Bournemouth. He did, he did ever so well. So I don't think that dad got probably a lot of satisfaction from being, you know, because they did well as well. Scott yeah. Cannon, I think, played non league and, and still had a reasonable career. But the, the Frank, you know, I think he was as much as anything sticking up for, fa for a family member. Yeah. But also, he called it right, didn't he? Yeah. He'll go right to the top. Right to, to the, the top. top. I'll tell you now. He'll go right to the top. <laughs> A bit short, but your mate there. I've just got to make sure I have two parts to get myself back into this. Right, Jay. So if you get a birdie though, on this uh, channel, you've got to do the birdie dance. I have. Do, 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 yeah, do, 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 If it goes in. Okay. I hope it does. I don't know if I want to. <laughs> <laughs> No. So I've got that for it, but you might. Is it to me? Yes, probably just YouTube's, I think. Oh, hey! Right. Jay to win the hole. Yes! Back in the game. One all. Good all stroke square. there. All square. That's better, Tubes. Red nap turning the screw. So we were talking about your legend of a dad and super Frank and obviously Frank Lampard Senior, uh, all in management. Have you never fancied it? Yeah, I have. But the, the thing with me, Tubes, is like my dad always said, you, you know, you met a good manager, but I think all I wanted to do as a kid was play football. So that was everything I trained for was to be a player. When I speak to a lot of players that go on to be managers, they say even when they play, they thought about being a manager. Yeah. And I think when I, because I retired you know, to 31, I mean, I could have retired at 27 because of my knee, but I kept going. I thought, yeah, I'm, I'll do my badges and get into it. And then lucky enough, I just sort of fell into a role at Sky yeah. and just enjoyed it. And then the League of Their Own stuff came about. And I thought, you know, you go into management, you can have six months at it. You know, Gary Neville's a great example. He went into management. It's yeah. not, it wasn't for him. No. I, there is, but what I, I would love to do the part, like the coaching and the help. I love to see, when I see young players sometimes, like young midfield players, you know, striking the ball, you can really work on that. So you can see where they're just doing things wrong. Yeah. I would love that element of it. But it doesn't, I just, it hasn't really appealed to me yet, Tubes. And I, because I've got such a great life and a great job. Yeah. Just, you know, and, I, and as I say, I didn't grow up to be a manager. I grew up no. to play football. And when people say, oh, you should be a manager because you, you, know, you, owe, you owe football, or people say, oh, people owe football. I don't look at it like that. No. You know, as a kid, I just want to practice to be a football. I didn't practice on, you know, tactics or, you know, the, and nowadays I think it's probably harder than ever yeah. because it's hard, it's hard work managing football. It's right brutal now. business. It's brutal. Isn't it? Everyone's got an opinion. Everyone's telling you what you should be doing. You know, not that I'd be, I'd be worried about that, but I just think I'm happy with what I'm doing. Yeah. Everyone loves Harry Redknapp um, and he's got so many funny stories. What is your favourite story that he tells throughout his footballing career? Favourite story? Let me think. Let me come back to you on that one, actually. Then, what, what do we like? What ones do we I'm trying to think now? What does he do, Chief? What's the best other immersive one? What, when he's on holiday? Yeah. yeah. 
Um, the but, jockey one's quite funny. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. My, my, there's some brilliant Paul Mercer stories, Tubes. The one when, you know, Mercer's, I need to get, you know, I'm really struggling at the moment. I need to go and get some rehab. I'm going to Tony Adams' place. And then he finds out, yeah, he's in bar. One of Dad's mates said, I've just seen Paul Mercer. And rings him up. He said, no, no, he said, no he's, you can't have seen him. He's, he's down at his place in Sussex. He goes, no, no, it's, I've just been talking to him. And then Dad, Dad gets the phone call. But, but the way that Dad handled it, because he, thought, he thinks, like, I need Merce. Yeah. I don't want to argue with him. I'm not going to have a go. He said, look, just tell me the truth. He said, because I love you, we'll forget about it. And the way that you had, I think he's got two in the next yeah, game. Yeah. But my favourite story about my dad at the moment is about this jockey, it's in his book. Because there was this fella, when dad was the manager of Tottenham, he loves to bet my dad on the yeah. horses. So this guy calls up my dad one day and says, I, I, I can't even think of his name, Timbo or Trimble his name was. And he said, I'm, you know, I'm, a, I'm a jockey. He said, you know, I've got some great tips. And if you say that to my dad, he's in. Yeah. You know, you could say anything to him and he'll, he'll have a bet. <laughs> So I, I'm at a few of the Tottenham games with Dad. Anyway, this guy comes and sits next to me, and he's quite tall. He said, "I'm a, he's an Irish guy, so I'm a jockey." I'm not tall to be a jockey. And then he's eating. We're going to the directors from half time. He's scoffing food. I thought jockeys are meant to be careful about what they eat. <laughs> anyway, he's got directors box tickets for the Champions League quarterfinals. His dad's fight, you know, like he's treating him like he's the king, and he's giving my dad useless tips all the time. And it works out. He wasn't a jockey. He was just some fella that pretended to be a jockey, but said he was giving my dad tips and he was getting free tickets for everything. He's like, honestly. How tall was he? Oh, he's about six foot three. <laughs> <laughs> he's like crouchy. <laughs> Are you sure you're a jockey? Honestly. Man? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, no, he did, but he's got so many stories. We did the show a while ago, I thought, like obviously in lockdown, and it, everyone, there's not a person you mentioned said, yeah, I know him, I've got a story on him. But is, they're always like they're always nice stories, and not many of them are about you know horrible things or situations. Oh, no. but, and it's very rarely you call them all over my dad's eyes. But this this little yeah. jockey, well, big jockey, certainly did. <laughs> little big jockey. Little He's big just jockey. a great man. He never rode a horse in his life. This guy <laughs> <laughs> tucking into burgers. Oh, oh mate. <laughs> I said to you, cool, Dad, I thought jockey, I don't know much about horse racing. I said, Dad, I don't know much about horse racing, but that jockey mate of yours, he reckons he's running tomorrow at, New at Newmarket. He's had about four burgers at yeah, half time. He's absolutely up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right, you're there, I'm over here. Yeah, go on. Right, got a little late eye in here. One all. No. Where's it gone? Ditch. Oh, I could be in trouble here. Well, it's a little bit right, but it's safe. It's safe. Just had to get it on the green. He's picking it up now. Nah, nah, stop it, too. Obviously, you're talking about your dad being a character. Who was the biggest character you came across in the in the changing room? It has to be Gaza. Yeah, just I, and there was I I've never met anyone like him. He was brilliant. He was such a, an amazing player as well, Tubes. And I, I, when I when I look back at my career, like you know, we all players that play at the, like England or Liverpool or Man, all at a real level. And there, but there's a few players that when you're training with them or when you play, that make you just go. That's amazing, you know, they make you clap. Yeah. And Paul Gascoigne did it, they should do things in training during Euro 96 and the build-up. I never played with him, obviously, in his prime because you know, he had that terrible injury, but he could do things. And the way he dribbled with the ball, he played with his elbows up. But I remember Euro 96 was just the greatest time ever because yeah. was a, we had, uh, Macca was one of my, Steve Mann was one of my best mates, Robbie Fowler, so the three of us were in the squad. And I remember Terry Venable saying, look, Guys, you're not just players in this squad, you've also got a job to do, you've got to babysit Gaza. <laughs> and we're like, what do you mean? He said, well, look, he said, in the afternoons, we've got to keep him busy because yeah. he's going to get bored, we're in the hotel. So, me, like, Mac, so what we decided to do was have an hour each with him. So, for some, so we'd finish training, we'd be back at the hotel, really? so Robbie would go, well, I'll, do, I'm a bit, I want to have a kit bath. No, I'll do two till three. Jamie, you can do three till four. Mac will come on for the, for the, for the late stint to go. So uh, we'd either play snooker with him, we'd play tennis, we'd be playing head tennis, football. And that was all we had to do. We had to keep him busy because otherwise it just got, like calls havoc, no one would be out of sleep. So we'd just go and do, so we'd have a little section with him. But it was brilliant. I mean, it was the greatest time. 
ever to be a foot to be a young English footballer, playing with people like Gazza, Paul Lynch, Terry Venables as a manager, Brian Robson, one of my heroes, was the assistant manager. It just yeah. had everything. And it was like, you know, we had a few drinks and but it was also very professional at the right time. Of course, of course. You know, and we had a we had it was just an experience of a lifetime. I I, I broke my ankle against Scotland, so I'd missed out a little bit. Although I, I stayed with the squad. Yeah. That's how good it was. Well, even when I broke my ankle, I could I probably shouldn't I could have gone you know gone back home or thought, gone holiday yeah, one. Yeah. I was like, no, I want to be part this is the best group of people you could be around yeah. right now. It was an amazing experience. Cool. I really want him to get well. Yeah. Dad, I do. I do. And he's a, he's a He's an amazing guy. I, I could imagine, though, that there's not many players. We've never. I can't really think of many English players that could could play football like him. I, I think back to sort of Italian ninety when I think Holland man marked him. I can't remember oh, who it was. was Kuman or someone man marked him. And that shows you how good he was. Yeah. You know? And we. I, I just I just think when the lights, you know, went you know when it all stopped and when the adulation stopped and when everybody was you know, stopped talking about what a great player he was. That must be so, I think it is hard for people. Yeah. You know, I wasn't at his level, but I found it difficult at times, you know, because it's that, the, 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 the amazing times of being a footballer and everyone telling you how good you are, the scoring goals in front of hundreds of thousands of people in their own season, it's sort of hard to replicate that. Yeah. And he couldn't, obviously management wasn't for him, TV wasn't for him. So he, it's a massive void in yeah. your life and everyone probably sucked him dry, took all his money off him. So it, and he's so kind. All the people you used to yeah. hang around with, like. and he's so generous. He gives people. He wants to help everybody. So it was a, Mate, it's I, a vicious I, I, circle. I once saw, you know, in the grasshoppers at Sky. Yeah. Over the road. I, mean, I don't want to mention the guy's name, but I once saw like he was. I think he was still playing for Everton, and he was like, he was like, so and so, can you get me some cigarettes? And he just chucked him, like, a massive wad of like twenty pound notes. So one, if you're on me, you go, piss off, do it yeah. yourself. Yeah. But secondly, give him he got, the money he, back. He, he money back. Of course. He got him 20 BH gold or whatever. Yeah. And just went, and I watched it. I was like, I know. I felt so, and it was just like, obviously the norm, because Gaz didn't say anything. He just no. watched him like that. Exactly. Like, That's not on me, is no, it? No, no. And he was a really kind guy, he, honestly. And the way he looked after us, and we had a great laugh with him. And to say you're playing with heroes. But what I also loved about that Euro 96 squad, what, I was talking to Frank about this the other day. Like, Frank Lampard, Rio Ferdinand, when they were 16, 17, they would, came to train with us. Yeah. So they became part, so they stayed in the hotel for a week. Yeah. And I, I completely forgot about it, but what an experience for them as well. Oh, amazing. And I, I'm surprised we don't do that more often. Yeah. Like you imagine, obviously Phil Foden was close to the first team of that squad, but if they do that, when you find them, the, the best sort of 15, 16 year olds, you just go and, like they'd say if we had 11 v 11, yeah. Frank and Rio were joining in. So that experience mm. then, yeah. of playing in Europe, you know, and having the laugh and have dinners with us. They said it was, you know, normally they were in Iron but they were <laughs> yeah. with us instead. Yeah, exactly. they went after. Yeah, exactly. I took you with them. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Love exactly. it. Here we go. Right, I think I'm in the ditch here. I don't know. Right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, dropped. Went in the uh, little ditch there. So um, dropped. Fourth shot. Like Jamie's got a chance for a birdie anyway. For... I'll give you that part. Oh, I forgot I had a shot to take. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Right, Jay, I can't win, uh, but uh, we can draw. But the way you're playing, mate, I don't think I've got much chance. We had the birdie darts, I think. Get the birdie darts. You've, you've, dance proper together. Went, you've got some moves as well. You've got some, you've got some rhythm. Oh, mate, no, <laughs> I was terrible. I, was so, I actually didn't want to make the putt. <laughs> Right. right, coming in. Let's just let that club come down. Let's 
Better. That's a bit better, tubes. A bit better, wasn't it? Go, bounce. Yay! <laughs> Trick shot. Trick shots. He's going to love this guy. Oh, John Virgo. Uh, I think I've uh, balls this round, but honestly, unbelievable chat. So let's just try and get this up the bet Midler. It's all right. It's all. Oh. Oh, bounce wasn't too kind. So Gaza, the biggest character you've ever played with. Um, what's the funniest thing you've seen in and around a football club? Funniest <laughs> thing? Oh, straight away yeah. you go there. <laughs> you know that, one. that face. Um, I think when I went to Liverpool, the, the whole like initiation stuff and Christmas party was the one. And you yeah. always had to get dressed. It was always fancy dress. Right. So I think the first year I went, we, like Don Hutchinson and I were good mates. So Don, Don was doing well. We went to Batman and Robin. And I remember like looking, we went to this like place to get the outfits and it was terrible. Like uh, my Batman outfit was like, well, Batman, especially by the end of the night, there's Hutch and I. And then you had to get up and sing a song. Yeah. And it was like, by the time we'd had a few drinks, I think I sang, Don, I think Don sang Fog, Fog on the Time. Yes. I, I sang I'm Forever Blowing Bubbles for some reason. I wasn't even a West Ham fan. <laughs> and got booed off and you get swilled. Yeah. But every, I remember, you know, Cara, you know, Cara got, remember the news of the world story with the, with the whole, um, where, the, where, where there were some girls and they had their, the cameras in their, in their bags. Right. And they filmed everything. Um, yeah, that didn't go down too well. <laughs> and, I, with, and we played, and it was, the, it was about a six page spread in the news of the world. Yeah. And we played Newcastle a couple of days later and the fans were obviously fuming with us because we they were the very professional. I think we went two nil down. Yeah. I think Didi Hamman might have got sent off in this game. We ended up winning 4-2, little Davy Tomo scored. Yeah. But I've never felt more pressure in my life to win a game because it was like... But the Christmas parties were... They've stopped now, unfortunately. Yeah, I don't yeah. know why. Yeah. <laughs> Can't figure it out, really. <laughs> wonder why. Yeah. Well, they just absolutely... Yeah, it was just great. They're great laughs, you know, and it's sort of... Like, the game's obviously changed. You have to be so careful now with social media and everything yeah. like that. But it was... Um, we had, we had a great time. Obviously, we had a reputation at Liverpool. But when you say that funny thing, when it came to football, it was, you know, it was football that mattered. I mean, one other story, really, which is probably, and I just got reminded of it a couple of weeks ago. Robbie Fowler and Phil Babb and I, we, got, we became mates with Robbie Williams. Yeah. And he just left Take That. And he came and lived in Liverpool with me, bizarrely. I, you know, I don't, he needed to get away so nobody could get hold of him his mobile phone. And he came to live in my digs. <laughs> with this like Alan and, Alan and Janet, yeah. they were the nicest people. Yeah, so Alan, let these people go through. Yeah. Yeah. So Alan and Janet used to uh, look after me, and I said, "Look, Rob, come and live with us." Like Robbie's up here, all the boys. We went out, so we took him out a few times. Went to this bar in Liverpool, you know, and there was, and he, he was an entertainer, Robbie. So he, there was a karaoke one night. So he's got up. So this old, we're in this pub, and I was like, "Rob, you got to be careful. No, really, we don't really want people to know you're up here. I'll be fine." He gets up, starts singing. This old boy comes and stands next to me and goes, he's quite good, isn't he? I went, yeah, it's funny, that. It's not bad. This has got up a chance. Yeah, it's not bad. It's funny. And, uh, and then Robbie, then a couple of weeks later, we were playing Aston Villa, and Robbie invited, said to Robbie, come on the bus with us. And Roy Evans was like, look, it was the end of the season. He said, no, I'm coming in, come on the bus. Came on the bus with a team. This is the first team. And then... Uh, we're right here. <laughs> <laughs> he's there, look. And then, he, and, then, and then he's come on the bus, and then before the game, we're on the pitch, looking at the pitch. Robbie Williams is with us, like one of the biggest stars. No yeah, way. on oh, the nice. pitch. Yeah, he's on the pitch. Like the, it, it's funny because there's no pictures of it. We went, on, we went on an end of season trip as well, and Robbie came on that with us, like John Barnes, Robbie, Dominic Matteo, uh, then Steve McManaman was it's McAvoy's best mate, but he was always clever McAvoy. He never, he'd always knew when to duck a dive out of yeah. trouble. Whereas like myself, Robbie Fowler, we were always the ones that got into trouble. <laughs> yeah. But it was um, mad when you think about it. And he was one of the biggest stars on the planet at the time. There's a shout out to this geezer. Yeah. yeah so. Uh, Robbie but great Williams. times, yeah. great times. Five iron, just getting this going. Started so well as well. No! Absolute hacksaw Jim Duggan. <laughs> oh, Jay's got the old, uh, what's that, the three wood? 
Oh, he's got the old rescue out. Take it away. 241, 241 I've just been lively and told. Bit of wind with. Just want to just catch the edge of that tree. No, I've got left tubes. Got over the top of it. Get down. Down. That's got in the, in the rubbish, isn't it? Ooh. Reload. Bam, bada bam, bam, bada reload. Oh no. He's reloading. Bit of reload. Oh, look. Tubes. What have I done? I've let you back in it. Right. Closer. Meow. Straight bounce, stay there. Bunker. 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 Not too bad. Oh, he's let me in. Fantastic football career. Fantastic family. Fantastic pundit. Unbelievable at accents. <laughs> Am I? <laughs> yes, you are. I Alan Hansen. Oh, Alan Hansen. <laughs> Where's he? Oh no, I'm useless at Alan Hat. Who told you I'm good at Alan Hat? I've seen you do it. Oh, the is, as you are the guilty of ways. Cross is the wall. Go. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> terrible. We go on a golf trip with him as well. And every time when he when we play, we go to America. And when he talks, he's like, this is the wins. And it's like you're always thinking about match of the day. It's brilliant. Oh, shoot. Don't, yeah, don't honestly. I love Everybody's that. Everyone's going to be looking thinking, That's rubbish. What's he talking no, it's about? No, it's not. It's good. Like it. Right, here we go. Big shot. Come on, tubes. <sighs> no, you tit. It's on the A3. It's on the A3. The golf has gone to pop. Right, Jay, uh, the last question, and this question I ask everyone on the four hole challenge um, if you can have a caddy for the day, past or present, anyone in the world, okay. who would it be? That's a good one. Well, listen, it's a favourite sportsman. I'm a, I'm a huge like, Muhammad Ali fan, but I'd have to say Michael Jordan. I went to the, the, the last dance, the TV show everyone's been watching. Yeah. I went to watch the finals in 98. Wow. And uh, I went to Phil Bab. Yeah. So Babsy and I went um, with our girlfriends at the time, and we had the most amazing experience. It was the game, I think, I think it finished 87, 85. It wasn't the best game ever. But I just want to see Jordan, you know, yeah. just to watch Michael Jordan play. So I would have to say, because he loves his golf as well, have him on my bag, give me a few tips, telling me about that series, about Phil Jackson, all the great players, and what a competitor. Oh. But I'll tell you what, the only thing is, if I let him down. Oh, you'd get it, wouldn't you? Oh. You'd get it. And if he beat you, he'd take your money. Oh, yeah. What a guy. Lucky you got a few quid, because he, he likes being big, doesn't that, he? Mate. I ain't got enough to compete with him. <laughs> every, and he gets every year off Nike, like a check just that you can't even believe. But what a cool guy. Oh. I mean, imagine that, having a brand, like just, he made Nike. Yeah. How, many, how many sportsmen can say that? Exactly. And and the trainers are great, aren't they? Got it. Oh, we're right. Oh, hey, we're look at this. Oh, he's got it. Jamie has found his original ball that we thought had gone. In not the easiest shot, but. Gone. Right. I might have a little bit more of a less loft, I think. I need your flag really tubes tonight. Yeah, <laughs> Absolute top still. Oh my god. Uh, the four hole challenge is officially over because my ball is still probably traveling on the way to Brighton on the M25. Uh, so it's over to Jamie Redneck with his favorite shot. No pressure at all. Favorite <laughs> shot. The flop the shot. The over the bunker. They call it the Redneck flop. The flop of Rooney. Oh. <laughs> no. Oh, I do. That That's do. not bad. That's not bad, dude. What a shot. Right, Mr. Jamie Redknapp for a par. Absolutely sensational, mate. I can't with virtual fist pump. Um, 
Unbelievable, mate. Thanks so much for doing no, it. Thanks for having me. Really good fun. It. Such a good fun. It's just nice to get out, isn't it? It's Brilliant. a great game. Absolutely love it. Good to talk football, YouTubes uh, and life and you've done so well and you know, proud of what you're doing as well. Cool. So it's an honour to be on the show. Hopefully get that done. Yes. Who else do you want? Oh. Freddie Flinter. Yeah. Uh, Freddie Flinter. Does he pay golf? Freddie's all right, you know. Yeah? Yeah, he hits it miles. You can imagine. He's got the cover drive. Yeah. Yeah, we'll do that. Cool. Well, he's got anyway. the cover drive in the bag. It's coming. People are coming. Um, please like and subscribe. Cheers. Thanks a lot. Woo! <laughs>